You're watching This Week in Space with Miles O'Brien. Brought to you by Binary Space. Reliable space systems. Hello and welcome. I'm David Waters. Miles O'Brien is off and bicycling 192 miles in the Pan Mass Challenge to raise money for cancer awareness. So while he's cycling, let's get in gear and head up to the International Space Station, where we are one spacewalk down and at least one more to go in NASA's efforts to remove and replace a failed ammonia pump, which has crippled part of the International Space Station's radiator system. Astronauts Doug Wheelock and Tracy Caldwell Dyson conducted the longest spacewalk in station history. That's eight hours, three minutes, attempting to switch out the pump with a spare. Unfortunately, removing the ammonia umbilicals from the old pump turned out to be a lot more difficult than anticipated. And there was a significant ammonia leak from one of the lines. The spacewalkers quickly fell behind on the timeline. In the end, they had to wrap up the EVA with the broken pump still in place. Ground controllers are now regrouping and will need to replan the second spacewalk to try to make up for lost time. Here's more from ISS program manager Mike Suffredini. I would tell you that we've uh, lengthened the amount of time that, uh, from, from uh, now till we get this next pump running. Um, I, you know, I, I would tell you that uh, it would take a lot of, uh, a lot of good luck and uh, somebody coming up with a really short tweak to the EVA for us to get to the point where we could start that ammonia pump after the next EVA. I really think we're going to end up at three EVAs. Um, so I, I think we're going to end up uh, being in this condition, this risk posture, a few more days uh, than we had originally planned. There will no doubt be developments in this story daily, so please check in with us at spaceflightnow.com for all of the latest news. The full Senate approved its compromise version of the NASA authorization bill for the 2011 budget late on Thursday by voice vote with no discussion. And then they skedaddled out of town for the August recess. The Senate legislation would add a final shuttle flight to the manifest, extend the life of the space station through 2020, fund commercial space activities, and start work on a new heavy lift rocket, which is supposed to be ready for orbital missions by the end of 2016. But the forward plan for the space agency remains in limbo for the foreseeable future. The House of Representatives is working on its own and very different version of a plan that preserves key parts of the Constellation program. It also slashes funding for commercial space and puts that heavy lift rocket championed by the Senate on the back burner. The soonest the full House would vote on their version is September, and then compromise legislation will have to be hammered out in a conference committee. So if you're holding your breath for this all to be wrapped up soon, looks like it's going to be a while. While the wheels of government turn slowly, workers at the Kennedy Space Center are getting pink slips as the shuttle program winds down. Commerce Secretary Gary Locke toured KSC along with NASA Brass and Representative Suzanne Cosmas of Florida. Locke sits on a White House task force aimed at improving the economy on the Space Coast as the clock ticks down on the shuttle. He met with about a dozen workers who will soon be unemployed. The task force will be submitting a report to President Obama this month on the prospects for helping the workforce through the tough transition. Let's hope they can come up with some good ideas. And speaking of shuttles, it seems we're going to have to wait a little longer to hear from NASA where the orbiters are headed after the program ends next year. The agency had said it would announce in July which museums would be getting the shuttles, but the deadline has come and gone with no word. NASA spokesman Mike Curie told our friend Robert Perlman at Collect Space that a final decision has been postponed because the dates for the final two shuttle missions have slipped. And while the powers that be ponder whether or not to add an additional flight for Atlantis next summer, here's what we know. The shuttle Discovery will be going to the National Air and Space Museum, which means NASA shuttle test article Enterprise, currently housed there but never actually having flown in space, will also become available. We're in standby mode to find out where Atlantis and Endeavour will uh, land. Motor Vulcan. An Ariane 5 lifted off from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana Wednesday, delivering two satellites to orbit. The RASCOM Quaf 1R is an African communication satellite, and Egypt's Nile Sat 1 will provide direct TV, radio, and broadband internet services to Africa and the Middle East. Also courtesy of our European friends, we have two satellite images from ESA to share with you. The first Envisat image shows a massive algae bloom in the Baltic. 
What a picture. It almost looks like somebody swirled the algae with a paintbrush. Blooms like this are apparently typical for the Baltic this time of year. There's lots of sunlight, winds are calm, and the water is full of nutrients from runoff following the ice season. And this is smoke around Moscow and central Russia, also from Envisat. That area had the hottest July on record this year. These smoke plumes are from burning peat fields and forest fires, causing breathing issues for our viewers there, so stay inside instead and watch us. Check out these images of a Class 3 solar flare that shot off the sun on August 1st. This one from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and this one from Stereo. Typically, a flare like this is considered small potatoes, but this one was accompanied by a fast-moving coronal mass ejection, or solar storm, that hit Earth dead on around midweek. CMEs are clouds of charged particles that erupt off the sun and wash out over the solar system. When they hit Earth, they can disrupt power grids, satellites in orbit, and light up the auroras. No word of any major damage caused by this solar storm, but in the U.S., the northern lights were visible as far south as Iowa. NASA has seen the future of Mars exploration, and guess what? It's international. NASA and the European Space Agency have agreed to cooperate on three Mars missions in the coming decades. And this week, they jointly selected five science instruments that will be part of the first one, scheduled to launch in 2016. The ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter will come first. It's designed to sniff for methane and other gases in the Martian atmosphere, looking for signs of possible microbial life below. The orbiter will be followed by a rover mission in 2018 and a sample return mission in the 2020s. And as you might guess, the driving force behind all this transatlantic kumbaya boils down to dollars and euros. The trouble is we also have an ec economic situation in the world that's not exactly conducive to a lot of extra money for science. Uh, recognizing missions cost a lot more to do the best science and to the economic situation isn't the best it could be. Uh, it's time for us to stop competing with our major partners like the Europeans and start working together. NASA's gearing up for Desert Rats 2010. Not the kind, but an annual field trip to the Arizona desert for scientists, engineers, and astronauts to test technology designed for off-world exploration. At KSC, teams are putting the finishing touches on a backpack rigged up with GPS, communications equipment, and cameras. This year's tests, they'll run from August 31st to September 15th, and we should see a wide range of technologies put through their paces, from the backpack to spacesuits, rovers, and more. Check back with us for the latest. And finally this week, a few slick dance moves to close out our show. All right, don't look at me, I'm not serious. I mean, it's not me we're talking about. It's the Athlete Rover, under development at the Jet Propulsion Lab. It's designed to either roll or walk as needed on rugged extraterrestrial landscapes. Athlete will also be putting in an appearance at Desert Rats. What you see here is a half-scale working prototype. Let's watch. Guess what? It's time to boogie on out of here. Thanks for watching. Please check us out every week. Also, please think about tossing us a few bucks at spaceflightnow.com slash twists. We'd love the support. We'd love to stay around doing this. You can send us an email, twist at spaceflightnow.com. Tweet us at This Week in Space. Check out the blog at milesobrien.com. Thanks so much to our sponsor, Binary Space. We really appreciate your ongoing support. Next time, we'll bring you part two of NASA's marathon effort to get the space station's cooling system back in working order. Switching out that failed ammonia pump has turned out to be a bigger deal than NASA anticipated. So what sort of fix will they pull out of their bag of tricks? We'll have that and more next time. See you then.